just wanted to talk a little bit about the politics of the Parliament and how that works. Because the largest group in the Parliament this time is the right wing group, which is called the European People's Party. Our Conservatives don't sit there. You may remember that a few years ago they took themselves off to an even more right place, where people not only were right wing but didn't like Europe. So that's where they are now in the ECR. Um, but so, so that's the right wing group. And then there's the left wing group, which is called the Socialists and Democrats. And then there's a sort of liberal group, which is liberal in the European sense, so really quite free market and quite right wing. <coughs> and they're saying nothing about the liberal democrats here. <laughs> so, anyway, so those, are the, those three groups are now trying to work together in what they call a grand coalition. And this is completely messing up the way the parliament works, because there is no strong opposition now. It gives us a huge opportunity as Greens because we can be the opposition and we are playing that role of opposition. But traditionally, we would have been able to work with a socialist group and sometimes with the, the right wing group in order to get things through. And at the moment, those alliances are really difficult. So, over the tax inquiry, for example, both those groups were told by their leaders do not sign up to the Greens call for a tax inquiry. And very bravely, actually, quite a few of them did, the French socialists. We were sitting there, you know, somebody was getting a text in. You know, what's, what's her name? Père Franche Bérez has signed up. Yes, Ronnie has English in Because little by little, we whittled away at the, especially the French and Portuguese socialists and got them to sign up. But they received a very firm email saying, don't sign up. And the right wing, the Germans on the right wing um, ignored their leaders, and then they had all sorts of privileges, like if they were working on interesting files, they had those taken away, so they were punished by their groups, effectively, for, for doing what was obviously the right thing. But this is because the leaders of those two groups are desperate to keep this coalition together, and the coalition makes absolutely no sense, because whatever, whatever policy you're looking at, the people who vote for these parties want the opposite things. But it's a way of controlling power in the parliament, and it's also a, a sort of defensive response against anti-European groups. So obviously the EFDD, which is where you could sit, is a lot stronger than it was last time. And beyond that, you've got all sorts of completely crazy right-wing nutters as well. <laughs> That's fine, you can it's film right. that for <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, so, so you know, in response to their very strong anti-European activities, everybody else has sort of come together in the middle. And there was even some temptation by some Greens to join in with this, but fortunately we said, no, we're going to play the role of opposition. And that's really important because the, the kind of mainstream opinion in Europe is absolutely not where we want to be. It's, it's pro-growth, it's pro what they call structural reforms, so reduced um, employment conditions and privatisation and so on. Um, I mean, I've got a list of issues here where I think we're playing a really important opposition role that nobody else is playing. Fracking, nuclear, sustainable farming, you know, small sustainable family farms, and also, very importantly, civil rights and digital rights. One of the things that happened straight after the Charlie Hebdo shootings was that everybody who'd been trying to get more surveillance and more snooping, they came in like the next day and said, oh, well, that would never have happened if we'd had passenger records, so we, we knew forever where, where you'd flown. Um, which had absolutely nothing to do, obviously, with what happened in Paris, but nonetheless, you know, they just used that as an opportunity and almost everybody went along with that, but we've opposed that very strongly as Greens and Jean Lambert is working quite strongly on that for the, for the Green Group. Um, yeah, and the last thing I wanted to say is it's really nice to be home and um, I don't nice get home. Thank you, thank you. I don't get home as often as I would like. Um, because, yeah, because I have to be somewhere else almost every week. I get four green weeks. Weeks when you can go home and call green weeks, which is rather nice. Um, it's, so, it's so important to come back here. It's so important to link what's happening here with the work I'm doing there. It's, but last week I was on an absolutely fantastic farm called Charlton Estate near Salisbury, where the farmer is, you know, loves nature. He does this farming in harmony with nature. And it's like... If you could imagine what our policy would try to achieve, it would be that far. And I sit there in the Agriculture Committee hearing this nonsense from people and lobbying from agribusiness, you know, people who are turning our countryside into a, an awful desert where nothing can live. And, you know, I need to remember what that farm is like when I'm sitting there in the Agriculture Committee. I was also able to launch Bournemouth as a sustainable fish city last week. The world's first sustainable fish city. Yeah, that was pretty good. But then people pointed out it's not actually a city, but anyway, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and that again, you know, you
you see the common fisheries policy, and then you can link that to what we need to do as consumers to eat different sorts of fish, fish that look a bit ugly that we're not used to, and you know what chefs have to do to learn how to cook those fish. So the connection between what goes on here and what goes on there is, is really, really important. So it was all of the commissions were given exactly the opposite briefs of what they should have had. You know, like Cañete, who's a a Spanish um, guy whose family is all involved in the industry, <laughs> oil industry, he was given an energy and climate change brief. And um, yeah, the guy from Malta, where they do that bird trapping, which I get hundreds of emails about, he was given the environment brief. So it was just like, it was just, yeah, I think Philip Lambert wrote an article called, you know, um, Time to Reshuffle This Pack of Jokers or something. That was exactly how it was. Anyway, but I, I mean, to me, Jonathan Hills of Women is the most serious of those, and we obviously tried to block that, but we were unsuccessful because the deal between the Grand Coalition was we won't stop yours if you don't stop ours, kind of thing. So a lot of commissions, you know, are not in the right jobs. But having said that, I must put in a word for Margarita Bestiger, who's the Competition Commissioner, who's absolutely great, and is apparently the woman on whom Morgan is based. And we had a meeting with her, and she was really dynamic and become my new role model. And she also made bi homemade biscuits for this meeting, in spite of being that. It's kind of got lost, actually, that the point of the European Union is to keep the peace in Europe. There have been small exceptions to that, but it has done that very effectively. And all the time when you're wandering around the Parliament, you see some, they are mostly men, I've got to say, but you see a bust of some old boy, you know. You say, oh, who, who's that? And it's one of the people that fought the war and decided we weren't going to do that anymore. And I think that's huge, a hugely inspiring vision. And the other time it really strikes me is when I'm in the canteen. I mean, I'm always happy in a canteen, but so it's not a library, it's a canteen. But um, no, so you're, you're sitting there, you know. All these different languages are going on all around you. It could be a sort of confusing Tower of Babel situation, but it's not. It's a really positive situation. People trying to understand each other, trying to learn from each other. That, I find, hugely inspiring. So thank you.